Hello and welcome to Daily Space for today, November 14th, 2019. I am your host, Annie Wilson, and most Mondays through Fridays, our team will be here bringing you all that is new in space and astronomy. So, Dr. Pamela is traveling today, and the podcast has already been recorded by Susie, so you have me today as a host. So, thank you all for your patience. We're doing our best to make all this work because what makes things work? Teamwork makes it work. So yeah, y'all are awesome. Our team is awesome. Go us! Anyways, on to the news. I have three stories for you today. We would like to start today's episode by congratulating the JAXA Space Agency and the international team of scientists who are working with the Hayabusa 2 mission for their successful 17-month mission at the asteroid Raigu. This little spacecraft departed Earth in December 2014 and arrived at Ragu in the summer of 2018. Since its arrival, it has dropped flitting robot cameras onto this rocky asteroid. It has bombed Ragu to create new craters, and it has collected multiple samples from this rubble pile of an asteroid. The journey home won't be fast. Hayabusa 2 is powered by an ion engine and had an initial velocity of just 9.2 centimeters a second. It is accelerating, but this is a remarkable, but not dramatic departure. In December of 2020, roughly 13 months from now, Hayabusa 2 will return its sample to Earth with the collection capsule falling to Australia and then being transported to laboratories in Japan for processing. 9.2 centimeters a second. So that means every, even though it's accelerating right now, for every second that craft is moving 9.2 centimeters. Um, Americans take a dollar bill or take a bill fold it into thirds, unfold one of the thirds. That's roughly 10 centimeters, which is a little longer than 9.2 centimeters. And that's how much distance this fairly large craft is covering in one second. Slow, but like the turtle and the hare, it'll eventually get there. It will. It will accelerate. I don't know how fast it's going to end up going. Um, But, like, the turtle in the hair is just going to keep plodding on until it makes it back here. Which is going to be 13 months from now. So, hopefully, hopefully there's enough material in that uh, return capsule. The teams that are working on OSIRIS-REx and Hayabusa 2 do intend to swap samples to compare the two asteroids, but it... I'm not sure what's going to happen if there's not enough material to go around. So, all right, on to the next story. In other pleasing news, the Kuiper Belt object that New Horizons visited last year, actually last New Year's, MU-69, or Mike Uniform 69, has finally been given an official name, y'all. This name is in the... mm, Powhatan Algonquin language. We would like to play a tribe member saying this name for you. Name is Oracle, spelled A R R O K O T H. It's a Powhatan Algonquin. I'm not entirely too sure if it's going through. Can you guys hear that? Name is Oracle, spelled A R R O K O T H. It's a Let me unduck. Word for sky. The name is Arakoth, spelled A-R-R-O-K-O-T-H. It's a Powhatan Algonquin word for sky. Oh, let it play a couple more times with without the undocking. The name is Arakoth, just so you all can hear it. A R R O K O T H. It's a Powhatan Algonquin word for sky. All right, so, oof. There you go. That is the name, or that is the name of it spoken properly. So I'm going to copy this link into chat for y'all. And as Birkin Symmetry says, Arokoth. Which, yeah, that's, that's, it's, it could be Arokoth, it could be Arokoth, it might be Arokoth. 
Ah, uh, it's a long A, Ah, uh, Rokoth. I did look it up, but listening as a pronunciation was better than me trying to work out exactly how to pronounce this. So, Arokoth, which uh, is what I'm going to go with. I, if it's slightly wrong, my apologies. Arokoth means sky in this language of the indigenous peoples of the Central Atlantic coast in the Chesapeake Bay region where we have modern day Virginia. At the naming ceremony at NASA headquarters on Tuesday, Reverend Nick Miles of the mm, Pam, Pamunki? I'm going to go with Pamunki. Pamunki tribe performed a tribal opening and tribe member Dr. Phoebe Ferris introduced this name. I believe that's who you heard in the recording was Dr. Phoebe Ferris. This is an official international astronomical union designation. So Mike Uniform 69, now Arrokoth, was discovered in 2014 using the Hubble Space Telescope by New Horizons scientists led by Mark Bowie. According to Bowie, quote, data from the newly named Arrokoth has given us clues about the formation of planets and our cosmic origins. We believe that this ancient body composed of two distinct lobes that merged into one entity may harbor answers that contribute to our understanding of the origin of life on Earth. It is pretty cool. And I believe that is one of the tribes members in the photo that you see on the left and on the right in the photo you see is Arrokoth. Um, so yeah, the, they did get permission from the tribe. They did consult all elders. It's, it's pretty cool, y'all. It's pretty cool. I, I think this is a whole lot better of a name than the, you know, older official nickname. And I think we should stick to, you know, the designators until official names are given. You know, just, just, just a thing. Anyways, that's my opinion. Okay. And our last story. Doot, doot, doot. Uh, today is a day where it feels like our science is on the run. From Hayabusa 2 coming home after exploring Ragu from, and from a tale of the mm, Kilo Bravo Oscar New Origins visited, oh, Kuiper Belt Object. From a tale of the Kuiper Belt Object New Horizons visited on its way out of the solar system, we now turn to a story of a star on its way out of our galaxy. While looking for the streams of stars associated with small galaxies disrupted by our Milky Way, scientists using the 3.9 meter Anglo-Australian telescope stumbled upon a star moving more than 6 million kilometers an hour on a trajectory that will take it out of this galaxy. By running its motion backwards, they were able to determine that this star likely started its journey in the core of our galaxy where the Milky Way's supermassive black hole did something to send it flying. Most likely a three body interaction between the black hole, this star, and a former binary companion led to the companion star getting captured into a small orbit around the black hole while this star was cast out. It is estimated this star will leave the Milky Way in just 100 million years. While this tells a terrible tale of a binary system torn asunder, this is a case where it is quite likely all objects lived and where a black hole flung an object instead of consuming it. That's actually pretty neat, y'all. Okay, so that's the, all the news I had for you today. So I encourage you to ask questions and I will do my best to answer them. Reminder, I am not an astronomer. I know enough astronomy to be dangerous. So while you ask your questions, I am going to remind you that we are a production of the Planetary Science Institute, working in conjunction with Youngstown State University and PSI is a 501c3 nonprofit, which means all of your donations are tax deductible where laws allow. And we are raising funds to pay for our server costs for all of next year. So that's the goal you see at the bottom. 
And to make that goal budge up, you go to, type in the command in Twitch chat, you go to streamlabs.com slash CosmoQuestX. We're doing pretty good. You guys are very awesome. And I know I say this a lot, but we couldn't do this without you. All right, I'm going to let the dog down and then I'm going to answer your questions. All right, so. Ugh. All right, oh, bits, puppy noms. All right, let me turn on puppy cam. Just trust me, they are waiting ever so impatiently. I know, I know you guys did so good. Bits for the dogs! Dance, varmints, dance! More bits for the dogs! Um... Okay, so... We scroll up and see if you all had any celery- or if y'all had- Oh, and Wayne Johnson had bits for the dogs! And... Bits for the dogs! The dogs are very happy. And more bits for the dogs! And more bits for the dogs! I think this is your favorite part, is just watching me throw Cheerios at the dogs. Okay, so... Oh, thank you for the subscription! Ah, thank you, Laura Sophie! And... Speak! Come on, speak! She did it once, I tried. I tried, Laura. And... Make it rain! They, they have a lot of Cheerios on the floor. I, I don't know if you all could see all the Cheerios they have on the floor, but thank you. My, my dogs are very, very happy vacuum cleaners right now. Okay. Um, Rigel says, uh, 9.2 centimeters second ex is acceleration, not speed, right? Oh, thank you again. We <coughs> <Johnson's coughs> are donating again. Oh my goodness. And speak. <coughs> Oh, good girl, Tinker, and make it rain! Thank you, Wayne. Oh, um, let me double check that. Maybe I got that wrong. Maybe I did get that wrong with how fast it's moving. No, it said initial velocity. Uh, so that, I think, is velocity speed? It's been... No, velocity is speed and direction, I think. It's been a minute since I've had physics, okay? Um, but it says velocity of 9.2 centimeters, so in my brain I'm interpreting, interpreting it as speed, so that's literally moving that roughly two-thirds of a U.S. bill, you know, one, one thing at a time. Um, it is accelerating. I don't know how fast it's accelerating, but it's, it's, it's there. Okay. Say it like a pirate. Arrokoth. Um, RefsMat says, I think this is about the earliest date that the IOU could use under guidelines to officially name this object. And given the, as a reminder for those of you that are like, what's the big deal with, you know, Arrokoth's name? MU-69 was previously known as Ultima Thule, which was slightly problematic because certain extremist groups were like, this is awesome. This is us now. And yeah, yeah, they, it was, yeah, it was bad. So the name was problematic. There were good intentions, but yeah. And the neat thing, kind of neat thing about Ultima Thule is that the entire object was called Ultima Thule, but one part was called Ultima and the other part was called Thule. So you could actually talk about, oh, Ultima being, I think Ultima was the circular part that was more of a sphere. And I think Thule was more of the flat disc. Um, I might be recalling this wrong, but the name was problematic. So yeah, I'm not surprised that the, um, International Astron Astronomical Union gave it an official name literally as soon as they could. So there is that. Um, yeah. As Planetary Pan goes on to say, um, 
Ultima Thule was the unofficial nickname. It was a placeholder and it was terrible. And I say that as being associated with running the naming campaign. Um, Refsmet adds more information about how long naming goes on. Uh, the International Astron Astronomical Union. Wow, words are hard today. The International Astron Astronomical Union can name an asteroid after it has been observed for at least four years in orbit and is well known. So there you go. Although it's not an asteroid, it is a Kuiper Belt object, and that is abbreviated as Kilo Bravo Oscar. Um, I'm strolling down. Uh, Veronica Cure says, never thought of a star moving that fast. Is our star slash sun traveling? Yes. Uh, our Milky Way is rotating around a central point. So it's kind of it's kind of wild if you think about it. So our planets rotate around our sun, and that is our solar system. But the Milky Way, and the next container up from our solar system is the galaxy. You know, our Milky Way. So our solar system is rotating around the Milky Way. It's not very fast, but we are rotating around the Milky Way. So yeah, everything's in motion, but because we're so used to everything being in motion, it doesn't process. And there's some physics and things behind that, but just we're on a rock that's hurtling through space that's orbiting a sun that's also hur hurtling through space. And not all stars are in galaxies. Um, there are some stars that are orphans and that was kind of the premise of the planetarium show cosmic castaways is that galaxies collide and sometimes stars are just kind of ripped out from their galaxies and left on their own and these stars may or may not have solar systems they may or may not have planets orbiting them so yeah it's it's pretty wild Larry Weird asks, what is the lower limit of a dwarf planet before it is a minor planet? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, Refsmat adds, Refsmat responds to uh, Larry and says, all dwarf planets are minor planets. They're all numbered as such. Okay, so all dwarf planets are minor planets. Planetary Pan, in for the save says dwarf planets have to meet three criteria a celestial body that is um in orbit around the sun has sufficient mass for self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces so it assumes a hydrostatic equilibri equilibrium that just means nearly round so instead of where's my benu so instead of this where it's kind of like a top you're talking more round like a lollipop at the top of the lollipop um and so that's two and three is oh there's four has not cleared the neighborhood around its orbit meaning that there's still stuff around there and four is not a satellite so four um ba -ba 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 -ba. Planetary Pan goes on to add, minor planets are pretty much anything that orbits the sun that is not a planet or a moon of another body. Oof, oof, oof. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Broken Symmetry says, bye-bye, making money for more dog bits. Bye, Broken Symmetry. Thanks for uh, popping in. Raven Lillian says, got in and heard puppy head shakes. Cute. Yeah, I think she's off camera, so let me throw some more, more bits. Okay, so Refsmite goes on talking about minor planets. This is why Pluto is numbered 134340. It is also a minor planet. Uh, wow, okay. Rigel adds, the solar system is traveling at an average speed of 230 kilometers a second. Or 143 miles a second within its trajectory around the galactic center. 
So for me to wrap my mind around how fast that is, that's probably the distance between going to Youngstown and Cleveland in literally a second. I'm not sure if it's 150 miles or 143 miles, but it I could see it being 143 miles between Cleveland and or Cleveland and Youngstown, but that's traveling over an hour's distance in a car if you're going around 65 miles per hour in a second. So boom, you're there. That that's how fast we're moving. Um do, 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 do. Yes, yeah, so many dreidel planets. Oh my goodness. Uh, Raj Luther asked me, what are my views on Pluto demoted to a dwarf planet status? It's still a planet. It's still a planet. Um, it's funny because the uh, planetarium community, when it happened, just there were a whole bunch of arguments about it. And um, a lot of people have really strong feelings. And if you want to include Pluto as part of, you know, the solar system, then you need to include, like, Charon and all the other minor planets, too. So you can do yourself a favor and limit it to the major planets and have fewer things to remember and make it rain. Or you can make it harder for yourself and remember Charon and Ceres, and I'm sure there are way more dwarf planets that I'm forgetting that are in our solar system. So, yeah. <sighs> Raven Lillian says, that fast seems like teleporting to your location. Yes. Um, and there was a comment about, you know, stars being, or rogue stars. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Larry points out, yes, our galaxy moves too. Everything is moving. Um, Refsmat adds, see, see, Refsmat's in the planetarium community too. Uh, no planet hood for Pluto unless Eris gets it too. A broken symmetry has a point. At least it gets people talking about planets. It does get people talking about planets, and it is a good turning point to talk about, you know, the different classifications and why we have some things classified as others, as well as, you know, a turning, you know, an opening to talk about Charon and or Charon and Aries and Ceres and all these other minor planets as well, because that can go from like, wow, we had eight to remember to I think at one point we had 14 official planets in our solar system. So, yeah, um, it's interesting, but the things. Uh, Larry Weird says, people forget that Pluto was named for the king of Hades, not a cute Disney dog owned by a mouse. So, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure which came first, the animation or Pluto. The animation, or uh, Pluto the animated dog or Pluto the planet. So, yeah, no, everything is moving. It's, it's wild. It's just, it's wild if you really sit and think about it, that we're on a planet that's hurtling through space, that's going around a star, that's also hurtling through space, that's in a galaxy, that's also hurtling through space. It's pretty wild. It really is. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. So, oh, deep thought bits for the dogs. And make it rain. Okay. So does anybody have any other questions? I'm not really seeing any. And all of that jazz as I try to sort through all of my windows. Oh, that looks terrible. Um, Pluto's hill sphere is much larger than the Earth's because of how the older outer solar system is wide open. The name Pluto, after the god of the underworld, was proposed by Venetia Burney, who lived from 1918 to 2009. That's an interesting factoid. Hanny says, if Planet Nine exists, its hill sphere will be huge. Um, okay, so Pluto the Planet was about 1931. And I th think, 
I think it beat Pluto the the animated dog. Um, okay. I don't know what a hill sphere is. I really don't. Uh, I'm assuming it's... Oh, says the dog first appeared in 1930. Oh, thank you, Refsmat. Refsmat um, pops in with... Gravitational sphere radius is Earth's hill sphere. I figured it had to be sphere because, you know, sphere in the name. But I didn't know what exactly it was. Okay. So gravitational sphere radius. So I'm assuming the distance from Earth, where Earth's gravity has an effect on the other things, is... The end of the radius is, I'm assuming... Where Earth's gravity has no, um, no more influence. Planetary Pan goes on to say, basically where it collects satellites. And yes, RefSmet te is telling me, yes, I got, I got the, the thing right. All right, yay, I learned something today. Twitch chat is awesome. For all those watching this on YouTube, you really should join us for Twitch. <laughs> because there's a whole lot more interaction and you can ask questions like all of this other stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Yes, Hanny, we are all learning. We are all learning. All right, so I think I am gonna wrap it up here for today. Um, it, it's, it's weird to me to only have three stories, but that's, that's how this goes. Um, yeah, you got, the chat is awesome, Broken Symmetry. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's do the thing. DPI says only three stories? Yes, normally it is only supposed to be three stories. It's just Rocket Wednesdays get out of hand. So, Earth lives in Connecticut. Pluto lives in Wyoming. Earth is bigger, but Pluto has a bigger backyard. Gotcha. That, that's actually a really good way to think about it, Refs Matt. That is a great way to think about that. All right, so I have been your host, Annie Wilson. Your script today was written by Dr. Pamela Gay, who is traveling. And um, we're edited and produced by Susie Murphy. And the whole kit and caboodle is a production of the Planetary Science Institute. Which, as I mentioned earlier, 501c3 nonprofit, we are fundraising to raise money for our servers this month. Bits and subs go to pay people. The Streamlabs donations at streamlabs.com slash CosmoQuestX goes to pay for servers. Thank you so much um, for everybody that's contributed. And if you can't, you know, contribute financially, that's okay. That's okay. You know, we're still brought to you by you. We are here because of you. Come hang out with us in Twitch chat. Um, come hang out in our Discord, subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch our videos on YouTube. I mean, follows are free. There's a lot of stuff you can do to support us without spending any money. Um, you can in inflict us on your family and friends. So yeah, yeah. Hey, I know, Puck. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You don't like beg begging for money either. I know. Okay, so I think that covers it. I am going to do the awkwardly rolling the credits thing because I can't remember what else I need to say. And I think One Girl Two Beakers is streaming, so we're going to raid her. She does chemistry stuff. Oh no, I lost chat. Um, she does chemistry stuff and it's pretty interesting. And she's a lot of fun, so. Okay, let's see if I got this working. Is it not working again? Why isn't it working for me? Oh, okay, there it goes. All right, credits are rolling. Thank you again, everybody, so much. Uh, if it's not cloudy where you live, go out tonight and look up. And wherever you are in the world, keep being awesome and have a, 
Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, bother's uh, streaming too. And wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful insert time of day here. Till next time. Bye.